In this video, let's learn how to perform a full text search on DynamoDB from a .NET application. Since DynamoDB is not best suited for advanced querying and full text search capabilities, we will first bring the data from DynamoDB into AWS OpenSearch. We did see earlier on this channel how to set up the zero integration ETL from DynamoDB to AWS OpenSearch. This video focuses on how to connect and query data from OpenSearch using .NET application. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my DynamoDB series. If you're completely new to setting up the DynamoDB Zero ETL Open Search integration, I highly recommend checking out my video as well as the blog post that's associated. For this video, I will be using an existing pipeline that I have already set up, which gets the data from DynamoDB into OpenSearch. So here in my AWS dashboard, you can go to tables and we have a table which is called movie, which contains different movie names. Now from here, whenever you add a data into this specific database, we have set up the ETL integration. So under integrations, you can see that there is a movie pipeline, which has the relevant information to push this data from DynamoDB table into AWS OpenSearch. I also have an open search setup. So here we have the my YouTube domain, which has the open search. Now, if I navigate into the open search and navigate into indexes, I can see this specific index. So inside here under index management, in indexes, we have the movies index. We can query this data. So let's navigate into the development console. So let's go to the dev tools and search this specific data. So if I look at search all and click this, you can execute the query against the movies index and we'll get all the information inside that specific index. We can also filter on this. So let's say I want to filter on the query Avengers using the fields title and description. So let's run this query and it will only return data that contains the word Avengers in the movie's title or description. Now let's see how we can connect and query the data from a .NET application. So let's switch into JetBrains Rider to see this in action. Here I have an existing solution set up, which is an ASP.NET default API. Here we have the program.cs, which has the add movies endpoint, which is a map post. And we also take in a movie and add that to the DynamoDB context. I have already set up the DynamoDB integration using dependency injection. Now, if you're completely new to DynamoDB, I highly recommend checking out my video linked here and in the descriptions below. Let's add a new endpoint to integrate for the search endpoint. So we can create a new post endpoint, which takes in the search query context. So let's add app.map post. Let's specify this endpoint, which is going to be slash movies slash search. This again is going to be a sync. Let's take in a movies search request, which we will create shortly. So this is going to be a new class that will contain the parameters for the search. So let's specify the request and let's create this new class as well. For now, let's leave this function as blank and let's create the new request class. So right below our movie, we can create a new class. So that's going to be public class movies search request. Let's add in the property. So let's have a string query. That is the property that we need to start with. So this will capture the text that needs to be queried against our open search. Later, we will expand this class to have more properties so that we can have advanced querying. But let's first start with simply a string query text. Now to integrate with Amazon OpenSearch, we will need to add a NuGet package. So OpenSearch has two .NET clients, a low level and a high level client. So let's look at the OpenSearch.client, which is the high level client for the purposes of this video. So let's navigate back into Rider. So let's add the NuGet package. So let's navigate here and right click and manage NuGet packages. And let's search for open search client. And let's add this specific NuGet package to our project. So once installed, we can start using the open search client instance. So let's create a new client, create a new instance of open search client, which is coming from the NuGet package that we just added. And let's register this into our dependency injection. So let's add this as a singleton into our services collection. Now this open search client takes in a settings that is used to configure on where to connect this open search. So let's create a new settings instance. So let's pass in the settings in here and let's create a new settings. So let's specify where settings 
and let's create this object as well. So that's going to be the connection settings class and let's pass in the properties. Now this has a URI, which is the URI of the open search. So let's create a new URI instance and pass in the string. So if I navigate into my AWS dashboard to my open search, I can copy this domain URL, which is what it will be using. So let's copy this and let's paste it inside our URI here. Now we also need to specify the index that this needs to connect with. So let's specify the default index by calling the function default index and let's pass in movies, which is the index name. Now by default, the .NET client uses camel casing to match the property names. However, inside my open search, I have the property names as Pascal case. So you can see all the properties starts with a capital letter. Now we'll need to make sure that the mapping exists in the .NET client so that it can match to the appropriate properties when I use the querying formats. Now, if I navigate into the settings class in the connection settings, you can see somewhere inside this, we have the default camel case being set up as the default field name infer. We need to override this to be using Pascal case. For that, in the program.cs, when we create the settings class, so let's navigate into the settings. And once we call the default index, we can also specify the default field name infer and override this to be using just the property name instead of applying the camel case. Now, this is by default going to be Pascal case because all my property names in the class is defined like that. And it's going to exactly match on the same property name. Now to connect to the open search, we'll need to make sure that we are authenticated and authorized to connect to this specific open search endpoint. Now in this specific case, since I'm hosting this on AWS, I will be using my role names to connect to that. In the previous video on the ETL integration, we learned how to add a role ARN to Amazon open search. Now similarly, in this case, since I'll be running from my default machine, I'll have to make sure my locally running AWS account has access to open Open search. Now, if you're deploying to this uh, Lambda function or any other way to host this application, you will need to make sure that role ARN also has access to open search. Now, in this case, if I navigate into the open search dashboard and let's navigate to security, and like before, if I navigate to roles and to all permissions, we can add a new ARN under that. So if I go to all access, map users, and we can add in the ARM inside here. So I already have added my user ARN inside this mapped users. Now we can also see that the backend role, which is the role of the ingestion pipeline that is set up to ingest the data into this open search. Now with the ARN connected, the open search client accepts AWS Signature v4 for API request. So any request that we are sending from the .NET client can be signed using this format and it will accept that specific request as an authorized version as long as the role is specifically added into the open search. So let's navigate back into our code to add the AWS Signature v4. All we need to do is modify our connection settings. The connection settings takes an overload where we can specify the AWS Signature v4 HTTP connection. So let's find this type on NuGet.org and we can add the appropriate NuGet package. So this is the OpenSearch.net or AWS SIG v4 NuGet package. So let's make sure to add that to this project so that we can use this connection object to connect with Amazon OpenSearch. So let's make sure to create a new instance of this and pass that into our connection settings. Now, once we have this connection instance passed in, this is automatically going to use our default credentials and use that to sign this request. So if you navigate into the constructor, you can see that this is going to get the default credential. Now this gets the credentials that's connected in my local environment. So since I have already set up my local environment to connect to AWS, it will be using that user role. Now, if you're completely new to that, I highly recommend checking out my video linked here and also in the descriptions below. So if I come back to our program.cs, we have successfully set up the singleton instance. Let's start using this. So inside our search endpoint, let's inject in an iOpen search client and start using it. So let's inject in an open search client. Let's call this as open search client and use this to query the data. So let's get the response from the open search client and then call the open search, the search async method. 
and let's pass in the movies type which is going to be the return type of this specific search now the search async method requires an instance of search descriptor so we will be creating an instance of that so let's pass in a search descriptor inside this and create a new search descriptor so that's going to be a new search descriptor of movie now for this search descriptor, we need to make sure that we write a query that is equivalent to the one that we saw in the open search dashboard. So if I navigate into the dev tools, you can see here that we already have a query format in here. So we'll need to replicate this inside our C-sharp code. So let's use the C-sharp high level client to replicate a similar query. So inside this, I'll copy and paste this and walk you through that. So we have a new search descriptor. We specify the word dot query to create a new query instance. And then we create a query container list. Now, if the request dot query, which is the text that we are searching for, is a valid string, we will add into this query container. So we will add a multi-match on both these properties, which is the title and the description, and specify the query that needs to be performed on that, which is coming from request dot query. Now, this whole thing is getting added into the must query container. Now, once that is set up, we can return the Boolean match on this must query container, which means it has to match equally on this query query that's being specified. So if I navigate into the console, you can see that's exactly what we are also doing inside this. So we have the query, we have a Boolean match and specify the must keyword and also specify multi match on these two fields using this query that we are passing in. So we have the whole query set up inside this. So we are passing in that search descriptor to the search async method, which returns back a search response. Now, since this is an async method, let's make sure to add the await keyword and await for the response. Now, once we have the response, we can return the data. So if I look at the response, this has the property documents, which contains an I read only collection of movies. So let's return that back to our API response. Now let's put a breakpoint in here and let's run this application. Application. So let's run this. We have the Swagger API running. So let's navigate into the movies search, click try it out, and let's pass the test again. So inside here, we can specify Avengers and let's click execute. Now, this is going to hit a breakpoint that we have set. It's going to create the new search descriptor that we are creating and pass that to the open search client. So once this search descriptor query is being executed on the client, it returns back with the document. So which is two documents and returns those information back to our API. So you can see the full movie data coming back into our response, which contains the word Avengers in both of these titles. Now, if I was to pass in a different keyword, so let's specify just the keyword end game that is going to only return the keywords end game. So now if I click execute, it's going to again hit the breakpoint. So let's continue the execution. And if I return back, you can see the data end game coming back in here. Now, I don't have the other movie because it does not have the word end game in it. Now you can also search based on the text in your description. So let's copy this one word universe and let's try that out as well. So let's pass in universe and click execute. It's going to do the same and return back the data. And we have that specific movie again coming back. Now, if we want to add advanced filtering, we can do that as well. So if I navigate back into the dev tools, let's say we have a more advanced filtering where we also query on the title, but we also need to filter based on the available for streaming or based on the rating values. So now if I come back into our code, let's override this to add more filter conditions. Now to start with, we need more properties on our search request. So let me copy and paste that class with more properties inside this which now takes the is available for streaming min rating and also the release year if required. Now for now, we'll simply use the available streaming and the minimum rating. So if I scroll up, we need to update this specific search descriptor. So let's copy and paste the code required for that and I will walk you through it. Now here we have a much more things being set up in the search descriptor. So we'd like we had the must query container. We are also setting up the filter query container. So in the filter query container, if the is available for streaming has value, we are adding a value to the filter query container. So this is on the term is available for streaming and passing in the value one or zero for that specific value. 
Now, similarly, for the minimum rating, we are adding in on the property rating and we are making sure that it is greater than or equal to that specified minimum rating. So only values that matches this criteria will be returned back. Now, we can also use the release year if needed. So we can specify the release year and do an exact match inside this. So once we have the filter query container, like before, when we added the must, on the must query container, we can add this using the filter function and pass in the filter query container. Now executing the search request is exactly the same. So we have the search descriptor being passed into the search async and the movies being returned back finally. So if you look at the shape of the query in the dev console, you can see this also takes a similar shape. So we have the must and we also have the filter list. And this takes in the different terms that is getting filter. Now let's run this again and see this in action. So now we have three additional properties that we can set to filter this specific data. So once we have the API running, let's navigate into the search, try it out. Now we have more properties. So let's specify Avengers first. Now if we don't want to filter by release here, we can pass this as null and let's click execute. Now this is going to return back the data. So you can see here, we have the movies being returned. So we have two movies, which is Avengers Endgame and also Infinity War, which is based on this filter. So you can see the rating is 7.9 and 8.3 on the other. Now, if I was to specify a rating of minimum eight, it's only going to return one of these values. So you can see that now this has removed the one which had 7.9. Now, if I specify 7.8, this is going to return both of these values. So if I specify that and click execute, you can see both the movies are coming back again. So now if you want to create a new movie, let's go into the movies slash movies post and let's try it out and let's paste in a JSON inside this. So I already have a movie that's created, which is with the title, the Avengers and let's click execute. Now this is going to add this data into my DynamoDB database. And since I have the ETL integration, this is going to get migrated into open search automatically. Now that will happen reasonably quickly because we have DynamoDB streams, which is being used to trigger the update to open search. Now, if I come back here and click execute on this by updating the rating. So let's specify this as seven and let's click execute. Now inside this, now we now have three data coming back. So we have the Avengers Infinity War Endgame and also the Avengers, which we just added, which has a rating of 7.7. .7. So now if I was to filter this by eight, we are only going to get back one movie, which has more than eight. So we have set up a full integration from DynamoDB into OpenSearch and also query that data using .NET. Now, anytime you're adding data to the DynamoDB table, it gets automatically migrated into the OpenSearch using the integration. And we can seamlessly search on this new text from our API endpoints. Now, if you want to learn of different querying capabilities and formats that you can use with OpenSearch, let me know in the comments below and I'll do a follow-up video on that. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.